Good morning. Thanks for joining me today for our daily devotion. Glad that you're here. It is a beautiful day out there. I haven't been out yet, but it sure looks lovely and looks like a great day for a walk. So I hope you get to go outside and do something today. Breathe, get some fresh air. The cat shaming photo of the day is sometimes I bathe my brother, but sometimes I try to kill him. Not sorry, <laughs> Elvie. <laughs> oh, dear. That's, oh, that is hilarious. Um, the extra today is a word find, so that doesn't do us any good. Nothing to, to, to report that way. All right, the devotion today is called Changes, the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. <coughs> it's by Barbara Johnson. And she quotes 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Listen, I will tell you a mystery, dot, dot, dot. We will all be changed. And she writes, recently, Bill bought me a red lava lamp to put on the TV. When I turn it on, it makes the most unusual shapes and patterns as the lava bubbles up into the cone of the lamp. I relax as I watch it slither and shimmy. Its patterns are never the same twice. And just when I think, oh, there's an especially nice one, it changes into something different. The lamp makes me think of all the patterns and shapes our lives will take. Sometimes we bubble up in a nice smooth glob that seems to know where it's going. Other times we hit something and break into a jillion little globules that dodge off in a zillion direction, directions. Sometimes symmetrical, but mostly irregular. Our lives are unpredictable, dramatic, and always interesting. Sometimes all the changes drive us crazy. I used to try to get it all together, and then I gave up. I used to try to keep up, stay on top of things, always be stylish, updated, in touch. Now I know better. I've learned to take circumstances one at a time, one day at a time, and moment by moment, bring the constantly swirling mass of my life's lava to Jesus. They say the only thing that doesn't change is the fact that everything is always changing. If that's true, and it is, then we really need Jesus more than ever. He knows how to make change work for us. Psychologists say positive change is as stressful as negative change. Think about the next time your colleague gets a promotion, your sister gets a new house, or your best friend wins the lottery. People to whom good things happen will experience the same kind of bursting, bubbling globules. Their patterns of stress are not better than yours, just different. And if you can't help comparing your life with your neighbors, just wait until tomorrow. Nobody's life is perfect, and if it is, it won't last. A thin line separates laughter and pain, comedy and tragedy, humor and hurt. Our lives constantly walk that line. When we slip off one side or the other, we're taken by surprise. But who said there wouldn't be surprises? Knowing God just means that all the rules will be fair. At the end of our, dra our life's drama, we'll see that. Meet every surprise with enthusiasm and determination to learn from it. After all, there is one thing. There is one thing more painful than learning from mistakes, our own or someone else's, not learning from them. We never know how things will turn out, but if we know with certainty that they will make sense regardless of how they turn out, then we're on to something. Much of the Christian life involves playing the role of detective, asking lots of questions of God and of each other. What am I supposed to learn from this? How will this motivate me to change? None of us know the answers, but the next change just might bring us closer. Sometimes Bill and I sit down together in our living room, turn out the lights, and just watch the red lava slip around. 
We talk about what we're going to do the next day or the next week. We wonder how best to use our time. We end up looking at each other and remembering what the writer G.K. Chesterton said about why angels fly. Because they take themselves lightly. And we know that's the only way any of us ever will. Let us pray. Oh, great God, you are the changeless one. But sometimes we get confused. Why should our lives be so zany? If people really knew, they'd never believe it. Keep reminding us that the ability to transform our circumstances is found in the way that we think about them. Keep us contained and buoyant in you. And we give thanks to you through Jesus Christ, your dear son, that you have protected us through the night from all harm and danger. We ask that you would also protect us today from sin and all evil, so that our life and actions may please you. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. You know, once again, she's right. I mean, the only thing that is constant in our lives is change. And perhaps, well, I shouldn't say only, because there is one other who is constant, and that's God. So while our lives may be swirling, change, changing around us, out of our control, um, things happening that we just don't understand and we feel like we cannot manage, we can still cling to the one who is changeless, and that's God. I pray God's strength to surround you today. I pray that God's joy will fill you up. And I pray that you see the love of God and God's handprints and footprints wherever you go today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Look for the joy, wear a mask, wash your hands, and I will see you back here tomorrow.